All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Finally back to recording. It's been a long time. I know we do this every now and then, but it's just something that happens. We're, you know, just a couple of people trying to do this situation, trying to run this, and life catches up with you sometimes. But we're back today. We're here. Another new episode on Season 3 of the Last Wave Podcast. If you're new here, um, I don't know why you would choose this episode, but welcome. And we deal with topics such as ghosts, UFOs, paranormals, cryptid, the supernatural of all kinds. Pretty much anything under that umbrella we deal with, we discuss, we talk about. And sometimes, like today, we have a little bit of visual aid. Usually it's just us or me chatting, which today it's me by myself. So that'll be fun. (laughs) But again, we're going to be, we've been planning some stuff for season four, because season three, probably going to end at the end of this year, and we'll just go straight into season four, maybe just do a yearly season run, something along those lines. But um, season three, we've had a lot, we've grown a lot, we've grown a lot as a company, just the last wave in general. Uh, We're doing a lot of other things other than the podcast. If you see us on Facebook, or follow any of our Facebook pages, or TikTok, or Instagram, you will know that. So, anywhere you can look us up, The Last Wave, and then you look up that little logo, that is pretty much on everything we do now, <laughs> you'll you'll be able to follow what we're up to. But, for today, again, I'll be by myself on this one, which is fine, back to the old days. Today, I want to go over something that is a really interesting theory that I've kind of stumbled into the last, you know, three, six months, something like that, you know, hearing little pieces here and there, but I have always, and if you've listened to any of our other episodes, I have always held like some kind of belief that we have been here before as far as human history, like I'm not talking about, you know, Bible time, I'm talking about 400,000, 500,000 years ago, if we reached uh, the pinnacle of a civilization, then we died off, or something happened, or Lord knows we did it to ourselves, then that evidence would be just lost to history, more or less. Um, Maybe we, uh, we've actually got an episode planned, we tried to record it, and it was like an hour of recording. We had a great conversation, and then the, there was an audio issue, so we couldn't load it. But we will eventually. We'll get it done. Um, but it's based on a very popular sci-fi series that we're also big fans of, which is the Warhammer series. And in that series, it takes place in the 41st millennia. Um, so, f- you know, 40,000 years in the future or so. But... Ironically, there are some things, and I guess it's because it's, you know, written by humans, but there's some stuff there that shows that it could have happened, something like that could have happened in our far past. And we've seen that with movies, um, you've seen that toyed with sometimes, um, I know the Chronicles of Shannara, when they made it into a TV show, I'm probably saying that, Shan- I never knew if it was Shahara Shannara, but when they made it into a TV show, I distinctly remember... It was a very fantasy style Lord of the Rings esque setting, but it was in a like bombed out future, and things like the trolls and stuff like that was part of the radiation that had poisoned and transformed humans, stuff like that. Um, and you know we've we've heard that floated around with things like Lord of the Rings and other franchises where that's actually in the very, very far future. Um, So that's interesting, but it also coincides with our real history um, that we know of and that we can research. You look at, um, well, you look at legends like the Hopi, Native Americans, um, Aboriginal legends, and all this stuff, all these legends that line up around the world of great cataclysm, almost wiping out all of humanity, but then either someone comes along to save us, or we are whisked away underground where it's safe, and then we're brought back to the surface after everything's you know finished. 
So I've toiled, you know, toiled around that and told around that. And there's so many possibilities of ancient Earth. Uh, and one today that I've touched on a little bit in the past with the uh, with the trees and the ancient trees and giant trees that reached, you know, to the sky. And that a lot of the plateaus and strange rock formations like, um, what is it, Devil's, Devil's Tower um, are, ancient, are actually um, ancient tree trunks that were torn down in the cataclysm and have since been petrified. That's a very interesting theory to look into. But also, if we had trees of that size, it would make sense that we'd have other nature matching you know that size so what we're going to look at today is if there was a part or a time in ancient history where there could have been humongous mushrooms like an actual mushroom kingdom basically earth is just ruled by 10 15 20 foot tall mushrooms and I'm going to try to tie it into modern day and, you know, well, at least modern human history and religions as well. So it should be a very interesting thing to try to do. Uh, first and foremost, this is actually, this is really cool. It's actually just a 3D uh, generated image, not 3D, good Lord, an AI generated image. Um, so, I mean, just look at this. I just basically typed in ancient mushrooms of Earth. And it gave me this like crystal clear image. What a time to be alive! But um, this these kind of mythos has always been in our in our history uh, from the stoned ape theory that they weren't talking about you know pot as much as it was mushrooms and psychedelic mushrooms and the knowledge gained from doing so, and that takes us all the way to today where people are still doing it. You know, and reporting, you know, seeing other realms, seeing colors that don't exist. Not don't advocate, you know, the doing of any illegal substances. But these are what things, these are things that people have reported whenever, you know, they are indulging in certain things for research and study purposes, of course. So it's very interesting to note that we're still doing something that our ancient forefathers and foremothers <laughs> were doing in abundance allegedly um so i again i find that very interesting but i also find it interesting that like today um this is just a funny picture so in D, &D which is you know one of the tabletop games very popular worldwide there's a race of beings called the myconids and they are basically mushroom people and this is just another ai little image I came up with, but they're mushroom people. And if you will remember, there's a very popular franchise, another franchise that has mushroom people as well. And that is super Mario and the Mario franchise. And if you actually watch the newer movie, the one where Chris Pratt is a uh, voicing Mario, the entrance to the mushroom kingdom looks very reminiscent of some type of inner earth uh, motif and it's just very reminiscent like he finds a giant hole going down into something and it's like a portal into the this other earth this other realm inside um, because it doesn't you know it's he's just going down yes it's a portal but he's basically just going down into a big entrance it honestly looks very little different um in difference to where they drop king kong in the king kong versus godzilla movie it looks like a big industrial entrance to the inner earth that is it all if you painted the entrance that king kong went into you painted it green it's the same thing it's the same exact thing so it's like why are we getting these tiny bits of random history but it's being portrayed 
in modern movies and modern franchises and things like that. Is this actual human history? You know, it could be. It could very well be. This is a this is another image. Now, in our very ancient past, you're talking, you know, mo- you know, millions of years ago. Apparently, there were giant mushrooms. So again. And this is a very, very far stretch. And I have another photo lined up, I believe. But this is like a, an, an idea of what an ancient earth could have looked like. You know, instead of just walking down this path and there's mushrooms at your feet, you're basically walking down a path and mushrooms are looming over you. And we look at, okay, I thought of another one, Alice in Wonderland. You know, obviously, you know, big giant mushrooms. So this idea of a mushroom world has kind of remained, you know, it's remained within our mythos, I guess, throughout history. And if I had done better research for today's show, I'm sure I would have found it in places like ancient Greece and Rome and places like that where they, where they had their oracles and soothsayers. I guarantee those people were finding the use for mushrooms. (laughs) So it, you just know that mushrooms and the use of mushrooms for research and for things of that nature and for understanding how things work, for the curing of different things, for the healing method for different ailments, the use of mushrooms for many different things have been around for as long as we have. And... It begs the question why the, it, it has, because is it, okay, is it strictly because it's a hallucinogen, but there's also mushrooms that we eat, so you can't really say it's because of that. So why has, has it remained in such an indelible part of humanity, more than anything other than, say, water or grain? <laughs> you know, that water grain and mushrooms seem to be a very large part of our history and what makes us humans especially with the stone ape theory where you know some scientists believe that is how we gained you know our knowledge um there are some people that believe that um, there's actually some books written on it i mean to do more research on this this might be a two-part episode but i i know for a fact there are people with the theory that uh religion in general especially christian religion is based on mushrooms and the use of psychedelic mushrooms and and rituals and things of that nature which you know um (laughs) i i i don't know again i need to do more research before i can make a call on that but as far as I believe, I would think that mushrooms have played a huge part in a lot of things throughout history. More than we probably know. But it is quite interesting that whenever people... Like, many religions openly acknowledge other realms. Whether it be heaven, hell, um, you know, Agartha, which is inner earth... Uh, The Buddhist realms, Hindu realms, uh, Christianity, you have the occult religions and the occult sects that believe that there is, you know, multiple other things, other places, um, different levels, things of that nature. Oh, man, I feel like I exited out of that. All right. um, Let's see if it pulls up. Open this real quick. Y'all seeing some behind the scenes stuff. All right. So right here, we've got. Uh, mushroom rocks again we're going to go way back to the petrified situation with the trees just as they were you know fro or not frozen but turned to stone after so long so this is a mushroom rock allegedly done by erosion and you know you could go either way with these the mushroom rocks i can't it's hard to say i mean that's a lot of erosion to just have one spot. I mean all of the things that are around this rock. Would have had to be removed or withered away. It's not just this rock. 
you'll notice there's a whole big ass field out here <laughs> like it's not just that rock everything that would be at the top of that rock would have had to be whittled away over time the same thing here you see everything around these rocks would have had to be whittled away that's at the top of these rocks so this would be the top soil layer if this is not a mushroom if this is just a rock then sediment would have had to have been above that and removed for as far as your eye can see that is the biggest disagreement I have with these mushroom rocks saying that they're just rocks I mean look there's an open hay field over here and sure like was it just a small hill was it a small rock outcropping and if so why is this one by itself you know it it just it screams of that ancient tree history uh, belief with the with the old um, old mountains and things of that nature are actually tree stumps now we even have one of those here in North Carolina which is which in my theory we do um, is Mount Pilot or Pilot Mountain you can go up to the top of this thing it's split into two at the top but look it up you can go up to the top of it and stand and you can see like multiple counties like you could see forever or at least it seems like forever and it all looks flat by the way but you know whatever um yeah, but you can see quite a ways like there is a long view from the top of this thing that is all by itself so it really i know you know you could say geology over however many whatever the crap years but <laughs> here's the thing this goes back to the 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 shape of earth and things of that nature you know are we going to believe our own eyes and what our minds are telling us or are we going to believe what some other people are telling us now granted likely much much you know more studied people and more i don't, I don't want to say intelligent because that's definitely not true because there's obviously been you know some work to hide some certain things over the years but my eyes tell me that that is a very strange rock that looks like a mushroom standing in an open field so I don't really know what else to call that now how how can we how else can we relate the mushrooms to religion so I found one interesting photo and it's actually from an article that was just released not not re, you know fairly recently and it talks about mushrooms in our ancient past and I'm talking about ancient ancient like way more than you know 100,000 years ago or so well, much much more ancient and we obviously take have taken mushrooms and that influences the you know ritualistic side of our history and our religion and our knowledge of you know just the world you know we've taken a bite out of an actual well it's not a tree of knowledge but you gain something when you go on these trips <laughs> so they say um and again i'm not advocating anything i'm just going off what people have said over the i don't know centuries millennia uh, reports of when these things are you know ingested again solely for research and education purposes but they 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 meet other beings they see different shapes different worlds different colors all this stuff and these beings uh they're commonly called the uh, clockwork elves and you get that sometimes with mushrooms for again from what i hear but usually mushrooms will be more of a a world changing you know it'll change the way that you see the world type situation and how can we again relate that to religion well it would it would appear that all, for all intents and purposes and the research done that when Moses stood on top of Mount Sinai I believe it was and spoke to a burning bush 
that burning bush was very likely an acacia tree. And acacia wood naturally has DMT in it, which is a psychoactive chemical. So when burned, it would release that into the air, thus being inhaled, thus sending Moses on quite a trip. Again, allegedly, and for educational purposes. I'm going to have to title this one Educational Purposes, I think. But, you know, there's just certain things we can't say with the algorithms and all that mess. But it's not like we have, <laughs> it's not like we have too many restrictions. But we certainly can't say some things. But I think everyone understands where I'm, where I'm going with it. Um, but, it, it, again, it is clear that there were times in our history where world changing moments could have very very possibly been influenced by either mushrooms or other i don't know what the word is uh other influences <laughs> um but yeah that's that now i do have one i do have this, this picture that i found that i really was interested in and again it's probably nothing i'm sure it's nothing but it does show an estimation of what mushrooms look like in our ancient history in our ancient past and if you tie that to certain things in one place in well in multiple places in the world that are major centers of religion in human history uh it i don't know it's probably nothing but I thought, you know, when I saw this picture, it was the first thing I saw. So let's look at it. There you go. That is what they estimate that um, mushrooms may have looked like in ancient Earth history. Now, the first thing I saw were, um, you know, were, were the shapes. And we see these shapes in very many places around the world. And that shape is an obelisk. You'll see the base structure going up to almost a point. Now, of course, that looks like many other phallic objects that we have around the world. But specifically, when I saw that, I saw obelisk. That's the first thing I saw. And if you look at or listen to some of our other episodes, I also believe that Egypt and, well, other people, <laughs> other researchers around the world, more educated than I believe that as well that ancient egypt was they found the pyramids when when the people settled there in our epoch in our era of human history they found the pyramids they found the obelisks and that type of thing <clears throat> but again this is very ancient human you know not human ancient earth history but i just thought it was very interesting and it's also very interesting that if you would see this shape and you would see the obelisks and then you would see where the obelisks are, you know, the Vatican, DC, obviously Egypt and all kinds of places around the world. So again, do with that what you will come at me in the comments, tell me how ridiculous, you know, the connection is, but maybe not, maybe you're like, holy crap, I definitely see the Citadel or not Citadel the the monument situation happening there um and i think that again that symbol you can almost tie it to any phallic symbol used by multiple you know multiple religious groups or multiple um, civilizations throughout history so i found that to be interesting i found it to be very interesting but again my favorite thing the whole thing that got this started was the mushroom rocks <laughs> And I still, I don't know, it's still hard to deal with this whole ancient earth situation. Because, you know, we'll never know. Uh, there are a lot of new discoveries happening every day around the world from different, different dig sites and, you know, LIDAR technology and stuff like that that is pushing our our beginnings back further and further at all times and i mean i'm i just saw the other day something about two hundred thousand years ago and they found a skull from that time period so early man but remember 
<laughs> there's something that kind of blew my mind. I heard a couple years ago, and I'm sure I've said it in past episodes. But you think about places like Atlantis and Greece and Rome, and <clears throat> imagine Atlantis as New York, right? It's out there by itself. You know, some people have visited it, some people know about it, or most people know about it, et cetera, et cetera. But then you have an event that happens and something happens to that place and then it goes away. But people know about it and people know about it because it was there. So the use of these types of situations like the rock mushroom and stuff and the use of the symbolism, people know about it because it was there. Have we been telling stories and legends and myths for all of human history? Probably. But there's also got to be a grain of truth in every single thing. We didn't just come out making up, you know, new things. I mean, we can. But again, we have we can only base our imaginations on what we have reference for. I can't ask you in your mind to imagine a brand new color. You know, so the stories that we form are in a way part of the collective mind of human history. And they cannot, you know, they are connected throughout history, but they cannot conceive of things that it has never seen. And they're connected in a very interesting way because it's almost the same way that fungi or mushrooms, uh, mycelium, will connect throughout the ground, much like neural pathways, much like the way our brains work. Um, so it's, again, very likely that mushrooms, just as much as grain or water, has influenced human history. And possibly, I would possibly say more. Because even if you go with the Ice Age and Stone Date theory, we weren't making bread, <laughs> you know? So we were scavenging. We were scavenging and, and gathering things that were already edible. Uh, and yeah, they might have been chewing on some grain plants. You know, but it, mushrooms were around. Mushrooms were available. And that would be, you know, a form of sustenance to be sure. So possibly even more than grain, mushrooms have had a bigger influence on human history. And that is absolutely mind-blowing when you think about it. So... Whatever is in our past is in our past, and all we can do is continue to tell the stories and relive these myths and legends that have likely had some kind of root in truth, but also some kind of root in the ground. That was really cheesy. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. That was terrible. But one last thing I do want to make a note on, and I always like making a note when we talk about ancient civilizations, and I brought up Atlantis. The... The theory that Atlantis or a place comparable to that could not have existed in human history because all we find when we dig and do research is primitive type structures, primitive human beings, primitive living situations, etc. I think that's just kind of absurd um, given the nature of the legends of places like Atlantis where they have descended into the ocean um, and things of that nature. But, again, I will reference New York. New York is a modern, ultra-modern, glistening city full of glass and machinery and just a whole lot of crappy stuff, usually. But, there's also tribes in Africa that are still out hunting with spears. So, one, you know, one million years from now, if people are out doing archaeology... And they're just doing it in Africa. They will assume that our generation was just, you know, cave dwellers or hunting tribes or hunting animals and living in tribes and 
We're traveling as a nomadic species in our time. Just by just if they happen to find some some remnants in a different part of the world. I mean that people don't think about that a lot. Like it's totally possible on our earth that a place could exist of advanced abilities and places of tribal communities can exist at the same time. What will our future, you know, have to show for what we've done in our era? Probably not much, considering all the uh, all the things we make things out of now. Um, <laughs> I always make a remark, and this is off tangent, but I always uh, bring this up when I'm making this point. Um, because I, I, I used to watch a lot of like ghost adventures and things like that and ghost shows. And they'd go into these old, decrepit, abandoned, you know, insane asylums and hospitals that have been shuttered up. And they got, you know, decay and it's just barbed wire or not barbed wire, but uh, rebar and the walls are falling off and everything. And it's like, yeah, this this hospital closed down in 2015 <laughs> you know? and it looks like it's been closed for, you know, 40 years. So very little of what we we create will remain so in 500,000 years what's going to be left is it going to be more rock shaped mushrooms is it going to be the pyramids or is it going to be your plastic car you know what that's what the things that will remain are the things that have remained and I guess we'll see. I got off on a little tangent there at the end, but that's all I've got for today. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. I really hope this sounds okay. I'm trying out a new uh, laptop, and I hope this comes through okay. So everything should be good. Um, I want to thank all of our sponsors real quick. Um, you can check them out on our Facebook pages. They're really great people, local people, um, and, and we like helping our local community. That helps us grow. At the same time, we appreciate all of you. A quick message of, of, of love, of course. Know that you are important to this world and you are important to someone. And times are very tough. i recording this on, well, in late October of 2023. And there's some things going on around the world that aren't looking too great. And times are tough and times are hard. But the best thing we can do is try to stick together and remember that we are humans and we are all connected in this universal consciousness, this universal neural pathway. Um, we are all kind of just mushrooms. So be the best mushroom you can. That's all I got for today. <laughs> Not my best in the in the uh, in the best of the speech, but it'll work for today. Thank you all for listening, and we'll catch you on the next episode.